came back. It's about time. Been waiting forever. Oh well, anyway. Good news, right? You're here. So I guess that means we can get back to work. Yay! I have an assortment of items here. I have some scrap paper and some sketching supplies that I got from the Walmarts. I bought it because it's got two graphite sticks in there. So, here's a what we're going to do. I intended on just installing the new cylinder into the scooter uh, after I've washed it and everything. But I got to thinking, you know, those, those ports on there were so janky that maybe I should do some port mapping. So, that's what we're going to do. Now, I don't have the tools to do anything about it. I don't have a right angle porting tool, so there's not much I can do as far as correcting the ports um, for now. But hopefully in the future, you know, maybe I'll pick one up and then I can do some porting to the, to the cylinder that I'm going to install. I'll go ahead and install it now so that I can see what kind of performance it offers and then I'll have a baseline so I'll maybe do some porting on it and then we'll see if it improves or gets worse or whatever. So the idea is to use a piece of paper and stick down in the cylinder and then use the graphite stick uh, to rub around uh, on the inside of the cylinder with the paper in there and that will make a, a witness marks where all the, the ports are and uh, we can use that to measure the ports and see what their heights and durations are and it will give you a, a profile of the port um, in a flat layout so that you can see the difference between the OEM cylinder and the aftermarket cylinder. So to do that I, you know, when you need a piece of paper and so I did some math I wanted to figure out the circumference of this cylinder here the bore of this cylinder so to do that here's a little refresher course circumference of a circle equals pi times the diameter you could also use 2 pi r r being the radius uh, for this case we use the diameter so I measured the diameter of the bore and it's 40 millimeters so our circ to figure out our circumference we'll use pi in this case we'll use 3.14 times 40 millimeters that gives us 125.6 millimeters. Now to convert that into inches, we take we use a conversion factor. So we know that 125.6 millimeters is the circumference, and we know that there are 25.4 millimeters in one inch. So basically, you just take 125.6 and divide it by 25.4, and that gives us our final answer of 4.945 inches. So there's our circumference. And knowing that a sh typical sheet of paper is 8.5 by 11 inches, I deduced that, hey, I can use one sheet of paper and port map both cylinders. So, I took my second scratch sheet of paper and I split it in twain using ancient Chinese secret. So now I have two equal pieces of paper and my intention is to clean out the bores with brake cleaner and then I'll put the paper in there and make some transfers and get a port map and I'll show you guys what that looks like here in a little bit okay so I got my paper and what we're gonna do is roll it up we want the clean side facing the inside of the cylinder so put it so that the factory edge this is the cut edge or the sorry ancient Chinese secret edge this is the factory edge, so it's straighter. So we want that on the bottom because the cylinder is upside down now. So the bottom of the cylinder, technically the top of the cylinder, is flat on the table. So that will be our reference to the top of the cylinder. So make sure you get that in there. Let it unwind itself, but make sure that it stays flat against the table surface. Now we'll try a few different methods. First, I'm going to try this really long woodless pencil they call it. Hold the paper steady and just kind of go to where you know the ports are. Just lightly rub it around. I don't know how well that's going to work. The idea is that the, when you're doing this, the idea is that you'll catch an edge of a port and it'll leave a, a distinct line uh, in the paper so you can have a nice pattern of where your ports are. This doesn't appear to be doing jack spread. So what I may do is cut this paper down to about here 
so that I can get in here with my graphite stick and use that instead because this doesn't appear to be working very well. Yeah, this looks like scribbles. Here I'm going to mark where I need to cut the other piece of paper so that it can be shorter and useful. Let's try this again. I hope if I did it the right way. Of course, I cut the factory in when I trimmed this piece of paper. So, the end facing the table now, or the work surface, is the end that I used ancient Chinese secret on. So, hopefully, it's good enough. For what we're doing, I think it will be. So, now I'll take my graphite stick. one way to do it. It's the other. Hmm, it's not working too well either. So after the, uh, the rubbing technique did not work. I decided to use a technique that I saw on the YouTubes, which involves uh, basically instead of transferring the, the port pattern from the inside of the cylinder, we will transfer from the outside of the cylinder. And the way you do that is you roll up the paper in the other direction so that the blank slate is on the outside facing the cylinder wall put this in here like so and you actually you can slide the paper on through and then you just take some paint and you spritz a little paint through all the ports and that'll leave a nice pattern on the on the paper um, and one thing that you need to make sure is that this paper is expanded fully in towards the outside of the cylinder so I thought well I could use a balloon to do that but I looked around and I got snow balloons. But what I do have are these gloves, these nitrile gloves. So I figure, hey, I can use these. And then I was like, well, how in the world am I going to inflate these bad boys? So I got to looking around. And wouldn't you know, that janky blue o-ring kit actually came in handy. It does have a use. So what I've done is I had a, a valve core, or a valve stem, I should say, that I've used. I bought two of them, and I used one here in this can. Um, and I had the other one prepped to where it's completely devoid of any rubber or anything. So what I did is I took one of those small O-rings, and I ran this glove through that O-ring. And then, using a little spit and persuasion, I jammed the, the valve stem down through this o-ring so now it makes a really tight seal so I can just use my air chuck and I basically got a reusable balloon so I can fill it up like that and of course you fill it up once it's down in the cylinder and that will expand that piece of paper and hold it tight so that I'll get a decent pattern when I when I use the paint I'm pretty proud of this I think it's pretty ingenious so I'll deflate this bad boy and we'll give the paint transfer technique a shot. Test one. Oh no. It leaks a little in some instances, but I think that's. Is it deflating? It was working so well earlier. Oh, I think I see the problem. My balloon nut has been affected. There, let's try that. Come on, you were working so well earlier. Okay, we're gonna roll with that. It just takes a light dusting. You get the top so that you get uh, a reference for the top of your cylinder. All right, Let's see how that did worried about the paint you can just use brake cleaner carburetor cleaner acetone whatever and that will 
that will remove the paint. Well, better than what we had before. Still don't have a good port map. I mean, you can see the transfer ports and the exhaust port, but they didn't all get patterned properly. So we'll keep trying. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. I had a, a, a nozzle off of another can that has a, the ability to have a straw attached to it, so I put that on the paint, paint uh, the aerosol can, so that way hopefully I can get down in these ports and, and get a more directed spray. So let's give it another try, shall we? Hope for the best. I also pulled up the uh, the valve stem had a little groove machine into it, so I pulled the O-ring up over to that. So hopefully that'll keep the, the the glove from leaking. So let's see what we got here. This is not deflated enough for one. That will do, pig. That will do. Now I also think I need to give this thing more time to, to dry. So that'll be something else that we do. No leaky. I did a great job of destroying this Murph, but that's no big deal. <coughs> it blows out the paint using this method. Maybe a little too much. No, I don't know. We'll see. I made a mess. Alright, I've let it dry for five minutes or so. Let's see how this one goes. Oh. Well, it's actually better. It may look worse. But there is a much more distinct outline of the ports themselves. Yeah, it shows it pretty good. So there, 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 there. There, there, port map. Alright, so now, proof of concept. So I can actually, actually, basically, what I'll do is probably trace these onto a separate sheet and then do the same with the new cylinder and then it'll be a much more clear perspective of what's going on. So I reckon that's what I'll get working on. This is what I used for my ingenious glove balloon technique. An o-ring and a valve stem. Here's the port map for the aftermarket cylinder. And it took me a few tries, but I got it. And if you look, this port here and all these ports, they're not uniform in shape. And that's not because it was a, a poor transfer. I mean, it's not the greatest transfer, but that's just the way the ports are shaped. They're a bit wonky. Overall, the dimensions are the same as the OEM cylinder which I have written up here but since the ports are so irregular it's hard to get a decent measurement on them but generally speaking they're, they're the same dimensions they're just very poor Tuh. <laughs>